Now this evening I'm going to be doing this steak in the air fryer. Uh, it's a 16 ounce steak, extra thick cut rump steak. Uh, I normally have uh, ribeye, but I saw this in Aldi's. And for a fiver, I thought no, that's not too bad. So it's 454 grams, which is about twice the size of a normal Aldi steak. I think they're normally about 270 grams or something. And this is 454. So depending on how this comes out, um, I'm probably not going to eat all of it. I'm going to cut it in half and put half of it towards a beef stir fry or something. Um, it's a big lump of meat. Obviously, 16 ounce. That's uh, that's a lot of meat to eat. Um, so with it, I'm having some homemade fries in the air fryer, of course. Uh, these are two medium-sized marriage Piper potatoes. Uh, I've peeled and they're just sitting in that water now for a little while. Uh, the seasoning for the steak I made a bit earlier. Well, it's not actually seasoning, it's uh, what I like to finish a steak off in. I mean, I'm no, uh, I'm no amateur at steak, uh, steak dinners, but I normally like to fry my steak. Uh, depending on how thick it is, if it was the same thickness as this, uh, I would fry it, hot fry it both sides, so it's seared, and then I'd put it in the oven with a with a temperature gauge, uh, permanent temperature gauge in it, till it cut uh, till it gets to the required temperature, then take it out. Obviously, I can't do that uh, with the air fryer. I did try to see if you could get a permanent temperature gauge in there and I did but well, I'm not sure if it's crushed the uh, the lead but I'm still going to try it and see if I can get a permanent uh, reading I've, I've bought a um, temperature probe just in case um, for I think it was £10 off Amazon uh, and it looks all right but I like to actually have the reading constant reading rather than keep opening and pushing the gauge in, the probe in to see what it is. Anyway, with this steak, I'm going to season it with some salt, some rosemary, some garlic, uh, and a little bit of black pepper, and some olive oil. Um, like I say, this is really for when the steak's done to finish it off. It's uh, basically, it's a knob of butter, uh, two chunks of butter I put in there, with three crushed cloves of garlic um, I've got a garlic grater specifically for garlic uh, and I've grated it and I put that in there and some parsley so if you can see it's that's, that's what's going to dress the steak once it's done um, ideally if I was cooking it in a frying pan I could like um, just baste it and that's what I like to do but obviously that's not going to happen in the air fryer. So I'm going to have to do the steak, take it out, put this butter on it, let it seep in, let the steak rest. And while that's all the time that's doing, I'm going to be cooking these chips, um, fries, chips, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and hopefully when they're done, then the steak should still be okay, warm enough uh, to have with the fries. Uh, with it, I'm thinking of having some some garden peas, um, frozen, and I've got a um, vine tomato, which I might chop. I haven't decided how I'm going to cook it yet. I might put that in the air fryer as well. Um, let's see how that goes. Okay, so that's the idea anyway. The steak's been out about two hours out of the fridge so still got a slight chill to it but that's fine I patted it dry um, both sides uh, my pet hate with steak or any meat for that matter is gristle 
Um, and I wasn't expecting too much for this, but just looking at it, apart from maybe just there, a bit there, I can't actually see any gristle on it. I'll turn it over. Turn it over, and I'm looking for... So yeah, it looks pretty much like there's not that much gristle or hardly any on it, which is just how I like it. So I'm going to season it now. I've given it a generous coating of olive oil. Uh, I'll season this one side of garlic, salt, pepper and a bit of rosemary. Uh, I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the other side. Okay, that's seasoned on both sides now, uh, and that should be ready to go in the uh, the air fryer. Not quite sure how long. I think it's roughly about six minutes each side. But like I said, I'm going to try and get a um, permanent temperature gauge in this, rather than just use the uh, pen type uh, temperature gauge. Okay, so I'm going to preheat the, the air fryer. I think I'm just going to give it the full amount, um, whatever that is, 205 degrees centigrade at five minutes, uh, just for starters. Okay, so the air fryer's on, uh, three minutes left on that. This is the temperature gauge that I'm going to use. It's, um, I'm not going to say the name of it because it's uh, going to be on YouTube. Um, but this is what I normally would use for chicken, beef, steaks. Um, and it's never let me down really. So I'm going to set the meat. If you can see that, it's flashing rare which is 63 degrees to me that would be great because by the time it's taken out and it's sitting there resting it will probably climb up to about 65 um, timer I don't need to put the timer on it because I've got one on the uh, air fryer so the internal temperature of this meat at the moment is uh, 7 degrees centigrade uh, and I want to get it to 63 which is a, a rare, uh, any more than that starts going into medium rare. Like I say, now this, this might not work, but I'm going to give it a try. If it doesn't work, I've still got my uh, pen type temperature gauge I can use. Okay, so it's reached its pre cooked temperature. Let's take this out. I'm not going to use any matting or anything in this. So I'm going to try and put this steak in there with the gauge in. Alright, so that's in. Right, the steak's in there, so I'm going to go, oh, so there's a steak button here, so what happens, it's 105 for 6 minutes, perfect, let's try that, okay, so I've managed to get the temperature gauge in the kasori, as you can see, that's the lead there, uh, Hopefully it'll be all right. And I've got a temperature of nine and 10 degrees and climbing. So it's obviously working. So by using this, you don't really need to worry too much about the time. Obviously I would have to turn it over, but as long as it stays below 63, uh, it's fine. And then when it gets to 63, 
I know that steak's done perfectly inside. So at the moment that's 12 degrees and climbing. Um, got five minutes still uh, on one side of the steak. So while that's doing, I'm going to prep up the, uh, the fries, chips, dry them out, give them a quick season, nothing spectacular, uh, and get them ready. Okay, so the steak's been in for six minutes on its highest setting. Uh, the internal temperature of the steak is now 30 degrees centigrade, so six minutes it's virtually halfway there. It's still climbing actually. I'm going to turn it over now and uh, put it back on. Okay so I thought I'd quickly show you what the steak looks like. As you can see it's uh, it's nice cooking nicely in there. Uh, yeah it's not too bad at the moment. Okay so I've put the steak back in. I'm just going to put it on now for another Six minutes at 205 degrees. Well, the temperature gauge is 45 degrees. So that six minutes should be plenty. Okay, so the temperature gauge is saying that the meat is done. Uh, and I've still got two minutes left on the uh, air fryer. So I'm going to take it out and double check it with the other temperature gauge. Okay, so I'll just put it in for a further two minutes because I've checked it with the other gauge and it's just below 63. Uh, so the probe might be picking up the heat from the oven as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm double checking it anyway, but I mean, at the moment it's saying it's 65 internal temperature as a steak but those two minutes uh, should be just enough for it. I'll just put the uh, the fries in the air fryer uh, and that's the steak it's roughly about 65 degrees internal temperature. Uh, we'll use this other probe as well Let's see what that says. Fifty six. So I'm guessing that that's going to be quite rare inside. Well, the chips have been in uh, twelve and a half minutes. Let's see how they look. Okay, shake it a bit. Back in again. I'll check them again in ten minutes. Now this is the steak after it's been rested. Uh, quite pink in the middle. It's I'd say it's uh, rare, medium rare. Uh, that's how I like mine though. Uh, and like I say, I'm not going to uh, eat all of this. I'm probably going to put half by for a beef stir fry. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with how it's come out. I think if you want it uh, a bit more cooked medium, then I'd say put it on for another six minutes. But well, three to six minutes, and that's what the internal temperature gauge so it's pretty accurate it did say 63 and that is 63 this is a finished product so we got steak 
chips, peas and tomatoes. Uh, for the money, a fiver, uh, I'll get two meals out of that steak and uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased that came out. There's no gristle on there that I can see. Uh, rare as I like it. Um, you've got butter and garlic uh, dressing on the steak itself. Uh, yeah, so I would say that would be a success in my book.